Okay, good afternoon everyone. Um, so today uh, I'm going to just briefly introduce who Aquatech are, for those of you who don't know us. Um, at the heart of all of our instrumentations is some way of getting that data back to the user. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the subsea communication technologies that we use with this type of instrument. And then I'm going to talk about uh, the pipeline challenge, and in particular how we've overcome that challenge with our Pipe Guardian instrument. And then finally, a few slides on how it was installed subsea. So Aquatech has been around since 1990. We're based in the south of the UK. Um, and the technologies that we're working with are looking at both uh, physical and dynamic characteristics of both structures and the marine environment. Uh, we're active in a range of areas, and we see the, the main three here. So we are taking measurements of subsea sediment uh, in suspension, um, looking at the marine soundscape, and also creating sounds to mitigate against uh, some of the harmful effects of man's uh, intrusion into the subsea world. And then within subsea integrity, uh, we're looking at motion monitoring, strain monitoring, leak detection, pipeline precoms, cathodic protection, among many other things. And cutting across all of these, uh, we have optical and acoustic modems, which I'll talk a little bit about, um, data logging technology, very low power for long durations, um, and about half of what we do is custom system design. So the system that I'm going to describe, although based on many of our existing technologies, was uh, custom designed for this application. And uh, today is the, uh, the last day of our reign as uh, Subsea Expo Small Company of the Year, um, but we've also picked up a few other awards um, for, uh, for our technologies over the last uh, 12 months. So in terms of our work in um, subsea and offshore, this is the kind of space that we're working in. And you can see the different areas that we're taking measurements in, whether it's cathodic protection or tension in mooring lines, uh, looking for leaks, and so on. And these types of physical parameters that we, we measure. And then in support of that, uh, we have underwater modems for communicating data. We have distributed measurement systems. And I'll talk about both of these in a little bit of detail, as well as subsea displays and, and data loggers. But the device that I'm going to focus on uh, for the latter part of the communication of the, of the talk is our Pipe Guardian, a retrofit pipeline temperature monitor. So first of all, um, our communication technologies. So this device here is one of the first that we developed for taking small amounts of information and transmitting it back through the water. When you have the need for a number of measurements within a given subsea locale and you can't just bring them all back by cable. We needed to find a way of getting that data back in somewhat the same way as Internet of Things devices, which are just transmitting small packets of data. This device, which is about the size of a coffee cup, um, is used for measuring pressure. So it's, it's one of a number of devices that make uh, simple readings and transmit them. Within it is an acoustic transducer and electronics that transmits the data and also acquires that data. And then there's also a battery inside that. So in this coffee cup sized bit of uh, electronics, we've got enough battery to be transmitting data for two or three years typically. And then we can scale that up or increase or change the data rates to match the application. And because it's a pressure sensor, it has a pressure coupling, uh, but there could be other ways of uh, connecting sensors to that. To go along with that, there's an acoustic receiver system. So this is the way that you uh, get your data back. Thank you. Um, and uh, what we also have uh, within it is edge processing. So for a pressure, that's a fairly simple thing. You take a reading, you send it. But the more complicated your data stream, the more you need to look at that data and do smart thing with it. Um, and provide uh, just the minimum amount of information to the user so they know that everything is okay or there's a problem. Then we'll put together some kind of display software to, to display that information in a meaningful way for the application. So that particular instrument was uh, used to monitor the pressure of, um, of hosing, hoses for um, a, an offloading buoy. So each pressure sensor would be fitted onto hose sections, 
and it was transmitting the, hesha, the pressure of the intercarcass void uh, back to a single unit. And you could either, um, if, you're, uh, if you have a vessel on site, you could provide a dunking transducer and pick up that data as they do when they're uh, doing their offloading uh, of oil. Or you could mount it on the calm boy or fix to your particular structure that you're monitoring. Or indeed, fit it onto an ROV or harvest the data by AUV. And then, in terms of making sense of that data, a simple dashboard that gives you a traffic light display of the status of your asset, whatever that might be. In this case, an offloading buoy. In this case, a multiple pressure manifold. So, this very simple acoustic comms technology just gives you the absolute minimum that you need. But then, if you want to go back later and gather your entire time series, then you would use our optical modem, which provides a much faster data download. So this gives you uh, a seamless interface between your subsea instrument and an operator top sides via the ROV umbilical. So you would have one end of this on an instrument, the other end held by the ROV and pointing at the, at the instrument, and the data goes up the umbilical to, to the user. It's only a couple of meters range, but that's perfectly fine for an ROV um, and with enough tolerance on the angle to get good communications. And although the devices you see here are good for um, 3,000 meter operating depth, um, we can also have much lighter devices that would fit on much smaller ROVs uh, that could be manhandled over the side of a boat um, or, or from a platform, so you don't need a world-class ROV or an ROV support vessel to get your data back. So, in summary for the communications, we've got acoustic communications to give you real-time periodic updates for slow-changing data or for status and data summaries that are produced by the edge processing. And then an optical modem that allows you to harvest that data. You've got rapid two-way communications and you can also set up your instrumentation. So with those comms technologies in mind that are really the way that we get our data back, now let's look at the instrument that we have developed. The Pipe Guardian was developed to meet a particular operator challenge. So with pipelines, new installations, you don't always have met ocean data for your entire pipe run. Your thermal models may not be perfect, um, and your flow models may not be perfect. And there will undoubtedly be variations in composition. You're not always going to get exactly the same content going through those pipelines. And when you start looking at legacy systems, then you'll have declining temperature, perhaps, or declining pressure, and changing composition again. And with brownfield developments, you may be trying to put new product into old infrastructure. Uh, for example, if you're trying to reuse pipe work for carbon capture and storage, you may be putting something completely different into those very same pipelines. And all of that leaves you with uncertainty and the risk of perhaps waxing or <coughs> thermal stress, uh, buckling, a number of different concerns for the operator. So in this particular example, um, it's a transnational gas pipeline um, with a pipeline that's running uh, in deep water couple of thousand meters in the offshore section, then you have um, product cooling as it comes up the slope to the continental slope and up to the shallow water, and you have cooling due to Joule Thompson effect over that period. And then what the operator was finding was that they were getting lower temperatures at the receiving terminal than expected. And this provides concern because potentially that means there is uh, thermal stress arising, pipeline temperatures dropping below design limits, and that is something that they needed to investigate. So they wanted a better understanding of the pipeline thermal characteristics so that they could maximize throughput. Now, this is a, a pipeline that's already installed, so there are a number of engineering challenges with that. First of all, they need non-intrusive measurement. So, the sort of thing that we can see here where we've taken measurement using a thermal well uh, on a subsea uh, heat dissipation rig is just not acceptable because we can't penetrate the pipe. It needed to be retrofit by ROV, particularly at uh, 2,000 meters, but even in the shallow water as well. So 
placing it on with divers or before it goes in the water, again, not an option. We didn't want to damage the coating. The coating was important, so we couldn't strip away the coating, as we've seen in one of the previous talks. And there's also an H2S environment, so we needed uh, resistant materials for that. And a long deployment life. They want to keep this in place for more than five years, so the batteries need to take account of that. And during regular inspection campaigns, they want to get all of that data back. And so that's why we started to use uh, our communication systems. And finally, we need to derive the internal product temperature. Well, it is a temperature monitoring system, so obviously that's the easy bit, isn't it? Not really. That turned out to be the biggest engineering challenge that we faced, and we've come across this several times before in temperature monitoring approaches. So the picture that I brought up earlier, this is the instrument. At the bottom is a plastic saddle that is contoured to the pipeline, and it has an ROV handle so that it can be maneuvered into place. There's a second handle that's vertical, uh, and that's used as a standoff, uh, and I'll show you why in just a moment, for initial installation. You have the main electronics housing with acoustic and optical communications, and then there's a temperature sensor. In fact, there are three temperature sensors on the system. And that standoff handle is used to stand the instrument off from the pipeline when it's first placed there, so that the magnets that you can see here, which provide ultimately about 100 kilos of attachment force, are not immediately grabbing onto the pipeline. So you put it in place, and then you wind it out so that it attaches properly. So, uh, in terms of validation, this was where we uh, worked on getting the, uh, the derivation of internal temperature from, uh, from the external measurements. So we have a section of pipe here that was tested in a, um, a pit that was cooled to between 5 and 15 degrees C. Well, actually it was done in Scotland, so it's probably warmed up to 15. Um, we have pipe section contents that were both heated and cooled from minus 15 to plus 10 degrees. And this was to simulate the range of different temperatures that the pipeline under question could be experiencing. And then this was all done in COVID time, so we had a nice remote control system that was controlling all of this from our offices back in Basingstoke uh, while these tests were going on over a number of days, cycling through the different temperatures. And we built up pattern of readings for all of the sensors within the system. That was then supported by finite element modeling, um, CFD, and uh, really building up an understanding of the temperature profiles within the instrument uh, from sensors both in the water, in the environment, in contact with the pipe, and also within the instrument itself. So three temperature sensors, and what we were able to do is to derive a relationship between those sensors and the internal content temperature. So finally, a few pictures of the uh, installation. The software set up with our standard software to configure the instrument. Um, this instrument was initially set up to take readings uh, three times a day, although when it was first installed, we had it running much faster to look at the temperature response. Um, and here we see uh, some depth testing going on. So um, the, the device that, I'm not sure this is sure, uh, the device that you can see being held, there is a handheld version of our optical modem that allows the, uh, the deck personnel to check that the communications are all going on okay without having to bring the ROV up to it on deck. Then the instruments, uh, eight of them in total, were deployed in a basket, lowered down to a position and put in place by the ROV. Now we see a little bit of action going on here, and in particular in the bottom two screens, you can see that standoff uh, being wound out as the saddle is first put into place, and then the magnets are brought closer and closer to the pipeline until you get the full attachment force. So those magnets are engaged um, by the ROV reducing the standoff, and then we can see the optical modem here downloading the data uh, for the very beginning of the deployment. Uh, and this is the first, I think it's the first eight hours of deployment where we can see the response of the three sensors. So the blue one at the bottom is the pipe sensor, 
the orange one, the seawater sensor, and the, uh, the dashed one, which is really following the seawater fairly well, um, is the internal sensor. So there's quite a slow response with the pipe one because of, uh, because of where it's mounted. Um, but what you can see is as it comes down into the water, first of all, um, just here at this level, um, the, you've got the water temperature, so everything goes to the water temperature. And then as it's put in contact with the pipe, the pipe temperature drops. So we've got water at about um, 9 degrees and then the pipe temperature at about uh, four, three or four degrees there um, with the cool product in it. So that system, that was the first few hours of that system has been out there for uh, a year or so now um, and is, is logging data uh, continuously. Uh, data has been picked up on regular inspection campaigns. So in summary, it's an autonomous pipeline temperature logger. Um, it's applicable for pipelines, flow lines, risers. Um, we've got magnetic attachment, but obviously it could also be strapped on if you don't have metal to attach to. Um, it can be installed by ROV. We have long-term data logging. It has a, a five-year battery life and the memory to fit with that as well. Rapid data retrieval, so it takes a matter of minutes to get this data back using the optical modem, so not a big burden on the inspection uh, campaign and we're deriving internal product temperature. It's been validated with real tank tests and thermal modeling. Uh, it's installed and operational now. So thank you very much and uh, any questions?